représentant de l'Association nationale Canada pour les armes à feu. Vous avez la parole, monsieur. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for hosting an entirely enjoyable social event yesterday evening. <laughs> the National Firearms Association is Canada's largest advocacy organization representing the rights of Canadian firearms owners. The NFA wishes to support and align itself with the comments of the WFSA. It is clear that marking of firearms, parts, and ammunition is far beyond anything useful or necessary, and it would not be useful or cost-effective. Such an exercise would be highly cost-intensive, both in terms of implementation and in terms of enforcement, and it would, have, it would be without any value. Uniquely marking ammunition beyond caliber, date, and manufacture is unreasonable, unnecessary, and fiscally impossible. Arguments for such members appear to be aimed at civil disarmament more than anything else. As we have previously indicated, our members remain concerned that UN attempts to regulate small arms and light weapons of civil society are misdirected and will have an unjustifiably harmful effect upon the ability of free people to have access to firearms and ammunition for perfectly legitimate purposes. The National Firearms Association rejects as false that civilian access to small arms is the problem. In Canada, the non-refuted, peer-reviewed research by Dr. Kaylin Longman, PhD, MD, is conclusive that 50 years of gun control laws in Canada have had nothing whatsoever to do with public safety. Instead, gun control measures have primarily been political or origin and intended to appeal to perceptions rather than reality in order to curry favor with the voting public. These, and we would argue UN efforts, have merely continued a trend of attempting to enact laws to disarm those elements of the public thought unworthy dangerous or of suspect loyalty. Quite simply, the peaceful possession of arms should not be a crime. A critical problem with United Nations efforts related to the control of small arms and light weapons is that civilian ownership and use of firearms has legitimate purposes and is important not only for target sports, hunting and so on, but also for defense. It is apparent from our interactions with the UN that many of the advocates of UN firearms positions are basically opposed to civilian ownership of firearms. They, and much of the UN ODA staff, are in effect anti-gun. This situation has created an inherent bias at the UN against civilian firearms ownership and use, as well as significant opposition to the information presented by users and the expertise provided by manufacturers of firearms and ammunition. The bias prevents acceptance of accurate information. This bias against civil ownership of firearms does not lend itself to addressing the real problems of international mass violence. It continues to force user groups and manufacturers into an oppositional role with the UN. The NFA and our friends in WFSA have frequently offered our expertise in these matters. However, in return, the United Nations must acknowledge and respect civilian ownership and use of firearms and ammunition has a completely legitimate activity. Perhaps some balance in staffing at UN ODA may be useful in building a better relationship. No gun control laws can prevent bad behavior, nor have laws ever stopped a determined person from carrying out evil deeds. Furthermore, if the purpose of law is to change behavior, it cannot succeed if perpetrators fear no sanction. As well, such laws cannot succeed if they work to remove the rights and freedoms of responsible members of civil society who own and use firearms. These people will responsibly resist such efforts. Canada's National Firearms Association continues to recommend that controls on small arms and light weapons be limited solely to major crew-served weapon systems possessed or sold by nation states, not individually operated firearms owned or desired to be owned by civilians. The rights and property of Canadians and our firearms businesses engaged in the lawful trade in firearms and ammunition, including surplus firearms and ammunition, are matters of national sovereignty, civil freedoms, property rights, and these are desirable aspects of national culture. One size fits all solutions affecting the rights of free people to own and use firearms do not address what are often significant national and cultural differences. It is important for member states to understand that small arms and civilian hands allow people to defend themselves from aggression, whatever the source. Self-defense is a natural right of all individuals and communities. 
And this right is especially important in the event of unrest and disorder, or in the case of state-mandated crimes against humanity, which were common in the 20th century and continue to be so to date. Civilian ownership of arms remains an important factor in preventing and limiting the effect of ethnic cleansing and genocide. While governments need to act against terrorism, disarming civil society violates fundamental democratic principles. It is a sad fact that many acts of terror are perpetuated and supported by governments, often against their own people, a problem which the UN has often been unable or unwilling to address. We implore you to direct your efforts at that real problem. Thank you for your consideration, Mr. President.